you want your house to look and feel clean all the time, but you don't actually want to clean because you hate cleaning, this video is for you because I'm going to share with you 10 tips so that you can get a house that literally looks clean and tidy all the time, but you don't have to do the work. So I have a confession. I don't actually clean my house very often, but it always looks tidy. People will come over and they'll say, oh, your house is so clean. And I feel kind of guilty because the truth is it's dusty and I don't scrub my bathrooms. And there's lots of areas that just aren't clean, but it looks clean because it's tidy. So that's what I want to share with you today. My real life tricks to keeping a house looking tidy all the time because that's the biggest part that makes a house feel messy. It's the clutter, it's the stuff everywhere. The wiping surfaces is the easy part, but I want you to also have a home that just feels effortlessly clean with zero work. The first thing that will legit have the biggest impact and make the biggest difference is something I call clutter catchers. And I want you to have these in all the spots that tend to collect clutter. For me, it's in the kitchen. There's probably a spot in your kitchen counter where you just naturally put stuff down. Even if you have homes for things, maybe something has to go back in the garage later, or you bought something new that doesn't even have a home yet. Having a clutter catcher is amazeballs. And one of my favorite is a basket just like this that's really tall and skinny, so it doesn't take up a lot of counter space. Even if you have a really small kitchen with not a lot of space, this is so perfect. Just toss the stuff in here to deal with later. When it's full, that's sort of our cue, but you're giving a home. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think we put expectations on ourselves that organization means like everything is always very, <laughs> but that's not how life works. Life's kind of messy. You have new things coming in. We have a baby shower coming up. This doesn't need a forever home. It can have a good enough home for now, and that is gonna keep your kitchen super tidy. So I just love this basket so hard, and it's something I really recommend that you have in your kitchen too. Another one of my favorite clutter catchers that I think everyone should get are these magazine holders. They are so cheap, but I especially love them for visual organizers because whether it's paper, books, it doesn't matter, even keys, anything that you generally pile, this keeps it vertical so it's visual. And you can leave these out where you naturally like put things down and instead just kind of plop things in the magazine rack. The best part is, once they're full, you can just turn them around bah, 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 and your clutter's invisible. So have them out and then when company's coming over, just flip them around and no one's the wiser. All your junk has a home. And again, they're so inexpensive. So if you're looking for a quick clutter catcher for your counters, for your entranceway, for your desk, magazine holders are a must. Hands down, one of my favorite clutter catchers of all time is having either a tray or a caddy system in your bathroom. Especially if you're like me and you're kind of just naturally messy, when I get ready in the morning, it looks like a bomb went off in the bathroom because I'm not the person to put things away in lots of different places. So having a get ready basket or a get ready caddy where everything you use is in one place, this is a freaking miracle. Here in this bathroom, my daughter, she's 14, she would just like have bathroom products everywhere, even though it was supposed to go in the drawer or underneath. And so this caddy with everything she uses to get ready in the morning, that's it. She actually uses out of the caddy and then just puts the whole caddy away takes seconds to clean up. And I do the same thing in my bathroom. I get ready out of the bin. And so I put it back instead of putting it down, back in the bin and then just put the whole bin away. This works for kids' art supplies, get a caddy. This works for any time you have a lot of little things that get left out. A tray or a caddy system is a must. The second thing you can do right this second, like immediately and your house will feel insanely clean. And that is reduce surface clutter, especially here in the kitchen. I used to think if like, if we had an appliance, it should kind of be out on the counter. So my toaster, coffee maker, blender, all that stuff was always out. And my kitchen always felt messy and dirty no matter how much I cleaned. And so getting that stuff off the counter, here is the rule, okay? If you do not use it, every single day, like legit every single day, 
do not have it on the counter. And I know what you're thinking. I don't have any place for it to go, Cass. I used to say that too. We have to find room and make room. Move your soup pots to the garage. Get that roasting pan out of here. All those huge bowls you only use in the summer if you have a big party, put them somewhere else or declutter the food processor that you never use to make room for the things that are on the counter. Even if you're a visual organizer, you don't want every single thing that you own to be out because when everything's visual, nothing's visual. It just looks like mess and clutter attracts clutter. So the more stuff you have on your counter, the more likely you are to put things on the counter, dirty dishes, paper, whatever it is, because it's like a magnet. So right now, take the clear counter challenge and get stuff off your surfaces. The third thing is stopping the mess in its tracks. So creating organizing systems, really simple things so that it doesn't become a mess. A really good example of this is just installing some hooks behind your door or somewhere in your bedroom so that all those clothes that aren't really dirty don't go on the floor, or the chair, or on a knob. It's like giving a home to all that stuff that's just kind of random clutter. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is something I used to yell at my kids about every single day. Not yell, but like, can you pick your clothes up off the floor? Pick your clothes up off the floor. You come into the kid's bathroom and this is the bathroom our guests use and there's always wet towels and dirty clothes on the floor. And I just couldn't get my kids to take it to their room. So here's the thing, if you, were, if you have a situation like this, whether it's in your bedroom or any type of mess that's just perpetually always ending up, stop it in the tracks and create a system. So I found this $25 hamper on Amazon. It kind of is invisible. I don't love it. I'm not saying that these are gonna be, like you're gonna love the way it looks in your home. That's not what this is about. It's about creating a home, a system to stop the clutter in its track. So now that I have this little hamper right here, not ideal, I'm not gonna say it is, I no longer have dirty clothes on the floor. Like the kids are using it because it's right where they're naturally piling it. And so this bathroom feels clean because it's not a mess. Another thing that you can do is actually put garbage cans in bedrooms, in the living room. You can get a really pretty looking garbage can or recycling can, but if your family is constantly shoving wrappers in the couch or leaving pop cans all over the place because they're just too lazy to walk it all the way to the kitchen garbage, Make it easier, just have garbage cans right there. They can be pretty, they can look like part of your decor, but sometimes we really have to adapt our home to just make things easier for everyone living in it. The fourth thing that I recommend is having a tidy tote. So you guys know I like to run around and clean with a tidy tote, but I also recommend having like a tidy up later tote somewhere in your main living area or wherever people just leave all their stuff everywhere. I just tuck this beside the sofa and if my kids leave things out or there's new shoes we bought that we haven't put away yet, you don't have to walk all over your house all throughout the day tidying. You just toss it in here and at the end of the day or when it's full because we can be lazy, we just put it away or we delegate somebody else to empty it and put everything away. This means that when things aren't being set down on surfaces or on the ground or wherever, your house is just gonna feel tidier. So a $20 basket can really make a huge difference. The fifth thing is actually really important and that's focusing on your entranceway and having systems just to stop the clutter at the front door. Because when your guests are coming over, this is the first space they see. And if it's messy, it's gonna kind of make your whole house feel messy. So put some focus in your entranceway. And this is really simple. Maybe you have a closet, but nobody uses it and they're kicking their shoes off wherever, or just like dropping their coat and backpack on the ground. Just install some hooks, really inexpensive hooks. Or I love what the DIY mommy does to her entranceway. She used really inexpensive Ikea shoe organizers and just lined them in her hallway and created like this beautiful organizing system and it's not really expensive. I also have an Ikea shoe organizer, but my biggest issue is at the front door. Now that we have a puppy, she's like chewing company's shoes and we're going out the front door to walk her a lot. So 
a cheap like folding shoe rack and some 3M hooks on the wall and I suddenly have a more functional entrance way. The shoes are up, she's not eating them, nobody's tripping on them, and you know, for $30, you can create a little makeshift mudroom. So look at your entranceway. How can you make it more functional? How can you create some organization to stop the clutter at the front door? This next tip I talk about ad nauseum. I'm tired of talking about it. You're probably tired of hearing it, but a command center. And if your paper is under control, you don't need a command center. But if you have bills that need to be paid on your kitchen counter or kids artwork or things that need to be signed and just paper kind of piled everywhere, you need a command center. This is a place for us. Not only do I put bills that need to be paid and I have one just for my kids, but all my to-dos and my notes, my reminders, my calendars that would just be kind of piles of scrap paper all over the place has a place to go. Like I've created a designated home to catch the paper clutter to keep me organized and it can be really beautiful you can have something on your wall that looks like decor it doesn't have to look like an office to create a really really functional system in your home this next one i might get a little slack over because i know how some of you feel about throw pillows but i mean you don't need pillows but we have to make our bed and make the couch. I don't know if you've ever heard this concept before, but making your sofa just makes your house look cleaner. You don't need to throw a bunch of throw pillows on it, but fold the blanket, fluff the cushions. If you have fabric, maybe like swoosh it so it looks like you vacuumed it. This is going to instantly make your living room feel clean. If your sofa looks tidy, your whole room will look clean. And the same goes for your bedroom it's going to look clean. And this isn't just for company. Here's what I find. When I started making my bed, I was less likely to just dump stuff in the bedroom, you know? Like I'm keeping it tidier because it looks nice. And so it's a small thing you can do. It's like two minutes to make the bed, two minutes to make your sofa, and your whole room and your whole living room is going to stay feeling tidier all day because you're less likely to make a mess. Okay, this one, I know you've heard before, but it's freaking magical, okay? Trays. Trays. It doesn't matter what your organizing style is, you should have a tray anywhere that you have stuff that collects. It doesn't matter if it's your kitchen counter or your coffee table, your bedside table. Trays are pretty magical for a couple of reasons. One, it contains the mess, so it just makes it look less like everywhere. You know what I'm saying? When you put everything in a tray, it kind of like stops the spread. That's what I'm trying to say. Of of clutter, but also what makes it most magical is now when you actually do want to clean, which doesn't have to be often, but when you do want to clean, you just pick up the whole tray and wipe underneath. It's like, boom, give it a wipe and put it back. So anywhere, look around your house. If you've got remote controls or little doodaddies here, maybe you have on your kitchen counter oils and salt and pepper and spices, contain it in a tray. Seriously, a coffee table tray, a bedside table tray, just throw trays at all your clutter and it's going to feel so much cleaner and tidier. This next thing keeps my house tidy. It eats all the crumbs on the floor. It is not penny. It's my real best friend, which is the Roomba, a robot vacuum. I know they can be pricey, the best investment I ever made, because not only is it vacuuming my house every day so I don't have to, but there's way less dust too, because all the stuff on the floor, this thing is like, it's eating it up. And I also love that it just goes back, it empties itself. It makes my house cleaner and stop. And it also trained me to pick stuff off the floor. When I first got it, I was super messy, but it would get stuck. It would eat things all the time. So my kids, myself, my husband, we learned to not leave things on the floor because it trained us. The Roomba trained us. So whether it's a Roomba or another robot vacuum, you can find these secondhand or for a great price. It is such a worthwhile, and I know, right? Don't be jealous. It's a worthwhile investment in just keeping your house clean all the time without you having to lift a finger. The final thing that you can do to have a house that just feels clean all the time is also the hardest. But listen, I have a trick for you. 
decluttering. Decluttering is the one thing I did that had the biggest impact on my life. Not only the way my home looks, but my time, my happiness, my self-confidence. I'm saving money. Every single aspect of my life improved when I started decluttering, but I know how hard it is. So here is what I'm really going to recommend that you do. It's called the pack up method or the quarantine bin. Grab a box or a tote and go into your kitchen or your living room, wherever it is, and hunt for things that you know you don't really need or use. Open up a drawer. Why do you got two of these thingamajiggers? Keep one and put the other one in the quarantine bin. This isn't gone forever. We're gonna move this to the garage or the storage room or the basement. And so if you're like, where's that other thingamajigger? You can just go get it. There is no feeling of loss. There's no fear of regret or making a mistake because you're still keeping it. But now you get to live with less. You get to see the benefits without any of the fear, without any of the anxiety. So go ahead. You do not need two whisks. Let one go. Open up. Look at those mugs. If you're not using them, Put the ones you know you don't really like in the quarantine bin. You can keep this quarantine bin for six months or a year. And if you don't miss anything out of here, now you can feel really good just donating the whole box. This is like that step in between when it comes to decluttering. You get all the benefits without any of the stress. So grab some boxes or totes and literally it's like cosplaying as a minimalist, you guys. It's super fun. Pack things away and see what it feels like. See how cleaner your house is. Experience a tidy home. Feel that like time-saving joy that comes from decluttering without having to actually let go of anything at all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're feeling inspired to do some of these little tips and tricks so that you don't have to clean as much, so we can be lazy together, so we can enjoy a tidy house without having to tidy our house. I, I really think that these, I know these work because I'm a naturally messy person. I'm kind of lazy. I don't clean very much. And yet my house always feels clean. And I want that for you too, because you freaking deserve it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So we finally went house shopping last weekend and it was, this is such an eye-opening and stressful experience for me because it's really hard to find what we're looking for in our price range. We don't want to spend a lot of money. We don't want a huge mortgage, but we do want some things like a little bit more space, maybe some more office space. All the kids on the same floor would be amazing, but we just don't have the budget for a McMansion. And so this has been a very stressful situation. We found a lot of great houses that are they tick the boxes, but I don't love them. I'm not, I'm not walking in and saying this feels like home. And so what do we do? Do we settle for a good enough? Do we stay where we are and make the best of this house, which is great? Or do we wait, you know, for the one, but we've been waiting for years. So I'm, part of me is like, it's fine. Let's just, let's just buy this good enough house. Even though I know there's so many things that would bug me forever in it but no house is perfect, right? You guys, I want your advice. I've only ever purchased two homes in my whole life and I don't know, I don't know. Is there such thing as your dream house? Do you wait for it or do you create it in a place that you've, that's like good enough that takes most of the boxes? <laughs> I really could use some advice. Um, yeah, we don't have a ton of money to renovate either. So we found some fixer uppers, but it's just, all so out of our price range and and anything we do find that's in our price range doesn't give us what we're looking for maybe i need to lower my expectations anyways let me know in the comments below i just appreciate your support so much and we'll see you guys next time